As schools were closing down due to the pandemic, it happened to coincide with the season when many of our schools were running exhibitions. Um, and the last thing that a young person wants to have come up, you know, in advance of their exhibition is some unexpected disruption. Uh, but we were very pleasantly surprised by the way in which young people were able to quickly adapt to it. So they still were able to put together a presentation about their work. They still were able to have their parents and family members attend, sometimes more of them because there were no longer schedule conflicts for them. Uh, they're still able to have their peers and other students uh, jump on a video conference with them. Uh, and they're still able to have their advisor really be there to be to form an evaluative and accountability uh, assessment measure. So exhibitions, you know, while certainly there are a whole lot of new logistics uh, to be worked out and, and new muscles to develop, uh, we found that young people were still able to really present a lot of their best work um, and show the ways in which they were adapting to these new and uncertain times. So a part of redesigning quarter four was thinking about what skills um, I need um, my capstone facilitators, or teachers, and what skills I need my students and tools um, to use. W what do I need them to know, right? And so um, if, you're, if you're creating a seven to 10 minute screen recorded video where you're showing your slide deck on Google Doc that you, or Google Slides that you pulled from slideshare.com or Slidebean, you know, a nice beautiful template, you need to know how to go back and forth. And so let's do a two minute like just check in video to see that they're learning those skills. That also forces the teacher to be able to have to teach it and get them to understand the inner workings of Zoom or other screen recording, you know, pieces. And so that's how we did it. And each week we we ramped it up to get them ready to be able to produce this seven to ten minute screen recorded pitch or presentation. And so I became a professional at Zoom by doing that. And I had to learn how to have human connection over Zoom if I wanted to facilitate questions. Delilah, I couldn't be prouder. You have found your voice. And that was my big thing with you last year. I remember that one time you spoke up for yourself and I was like, oh, she has a voice. This year, this year you gave your people a voice and um, that's huge. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm gonna open it up for questions. I, if I keep talking about all of you guys, I'm gonna end up a mess. We redesigned quarter four, you know, immediately. You know, I sat down, I then met with my team of capstone teachers and we thought about scaffolding. Okay, we need to teach them how to record video and screen share. Let's look at Screencastify and Zoom recording. Let's not pigeonhole some of them. Some of them are amazing at um, digital technology and they can do it themselves. And so I worked with them to create a plan. Week one, week two, week three, week four. These are the deliverables at every stage, preparing them not only to kind of turn in their work, which hopefully expands and keeps going after HPA, but to have um, a recorded presentation that they're deeply proud of and that they feel like does service to the work that they've done. What was insane was that for some that had been puttering along for three quarters, they kicked it into a gear I didn't realize was possible in education. If you're getting ready to launch a series of exhibitions for young people in a virtual way, you want to be really careful to prepare folks, make sure they've got enough time to get comfortable with the technology, uh, lay out some of the logistics. What can people expect? When do they need to log in? How long will the general session last? When are they expected to mute? Uh, and when are they expected to chime in? So these are really, really important pieces. They might seem like little technical details, but if you don't attend to those, uh, you're going to wind up with a sort of muddled and confusing experience for everyone that could really detract from the young person demonstrating the best of their learning. And what was really important was I thought a lot about internet connectivity and the, the beautiful awkwardness of video conferences from Zoom to Skype. 
Do you have Do you have a hand up as well, Dr. Cameron? Yeah, that's me. I, I couldn't figure out how to do it in the in the scene, so I was just like, oh, hand up. Their presentations were pre-recorded. They were seven to ten minutes, and what that allowed um, what that allowed to happen was there was so much more. Um, iterations or edits of their presentation. They never would have been as polished or even as authentic as they were had they been in person. I could then download all of those videos, put them on a file in my desktop, know how much time each was. This is seven, so I have to do three minutes more of que questions, and then be able to go right into the Q&A to make sure that the student is the centerpiece for me as facilitator to ask 95% of the questions that come in, and then to know when to break protocol to create human connection by having a parent or a former teacher or a subject matter expert who served as a mentor be able to ask that question directly. The first question is, what did the process of establishing the various relationships that were acquired to make this project a success teach you? Uh, it taught me that a lot of stuff, um, sometimes it's luck. The first encounter with, with uh, Jeff Millison was luck. Uh, I met him on a dive. Jeff, is that you on this call right now? Uh, Jeff, do you? I'd love to, to challenge the protocol here. Um, could you unmute yourself and if you have a question or just a comment? Thanks for letting me jump in on this. Hi, Anna. Uh, <laughs> it's a real pleasure working with Anna through this. And then we moved on to the next one. And when there were large chunks, you could take a five minute break for anyone that wanted to, you know, stay on there too. But the beautiful thing about video conferencing is I just go like this and I can leave and come back. Right. And if I'm, if I'm in a room of a digital room of, 50, 60, 70, 80. At one point we had 91 people on one of these on one of these presentation Zooms. Um, it's less um, obstructive. I, I remember I was talking to a mentor of mine in preparation for this week. Um, and he and and I said, I just want there to be human connection on these on these Zoom calls. And he laughed and he said, it's a Zoom call. There is no such thing as, as human connection. And, and he was, and the next week, he, he took so much time out of his week to be a part of it. And he said, he texted me in the middle of someone's presentation. He's like, oh, I was so wrong. You know, because there was so much heart on display in those Q and A's. <clears throat> and that couldn't have occurred without so many family members or you know, teachers or people in these students' lives that got to experience it. I think what you really were able to do um, is tell your family story and put, like you said, like I, you, you, you found this new identified pride in who you are. And, and by bringing that into your academic journey, if that's the only thing that students get out of this experience then i think we did our job mr shorn because it's really about that it's identifying who you come from it's acknowledging those people and it's grabbing that and making it yours and when you walk across that virtual stage in a couple of weeks you walk across with that not just the classes and the credit that you got from hpa but you walk across with your family ancestral knowledge Ohana wisdom, each of you, each of you have done that. At times, students would pick up their device and walk out to show people the products that they had made. So if they had been working on their bike, if they had been building a garden, a couple had actually even constructed a tiny house in their own driveway. Uh, being able to just take it over and show everybody who was on the video chat the actual authentic products uh, that demonstrated what they had become competent at uh, were really great ways to engage folks who might not have been having a lot of other stimulation while they were at home. And there was just so much heart and humanity and student agency. And like you'd see a parent on their cell phone crying, you know, as they're watching their child, or you saw a mentor, you know, a scientist, you know, get to get to experience how they impacted the life of a, of a teenager. Dr. Cameron Allen, do you have any kind of thoughts or reflections on what it was like to work with um, Avani and um, 
why you'd give up your time to work with these youth. So Avani is incredible. I don't know any high school kid who can collect blood samples from turtles. Like that's usually something that you do when you're doing a PhD, but um, she was a fast learner, eager to do it and never gave up. I know there are many times we were in the field and uh, it might've been a little bit complicated, um, but you know, she accepted my guidance with um, I don't know, she was just so graceful about everything. So it was really nice to work with her and see her grow. And as you look at those recorded Q and A's, that's where you see, that's where I saw moments I'd never seen as an educator and moments that I've been striving to help create, you know, for the past 10 years of my life, making education kind of purpose and passion based and relevant where students see that the skills they're acquiring um, can be matched with their life experiences. And when you build a framework of that, that's going to help you design what presentations look like, what celebrations look like, because it's all going to be based on that, these dawning capacities, as Dewey would say, of these brilliant youth that you're working with. And I mean, that's, that's when School is about learning as opposed to whatever it is about now.